Welcome to video 1-6, Significant Figures and Digits, with Mr. Nick Lawrence. This video is going to be dealing with uh, the ability to determine significant figures in a number. Then we're going to use these significant figures uh, in math problems, and so when we multiply and divide certain numbers out, we can still understand the answer and how significant that answer really is. So the only term here for vocab is significant figures. Uh, and really all that means is a digit that was measured. So a significant figure or a significant digit, and I'll call them sig figs from here on out, is this concept that when we take a measurement, each number that is actually recorded has meaning. So down here below, we see the number 29.21. Each of these numbers have a meaning. Some of these numbers, we know for sure exactly what they mean. They are exact. And some numbers we actually had to estimate, meaning I was not very precise. I don't know 100% on this last digit, but I know that this was exact, this was exact, and this was exact. And that's how numbers are written, to show an understanding of what was exact. And then we're allowed on that last digit to say this one was estimated. So when we measure any number in the lab using any kind of equipment, we as scientists and as educated people are allowed to estimate one digit beyond what was accurately measured by the tool. So when I look at this ruler, I know for sure it was in the 20 range. I know for sure the single digit was in the nine range. I even know looking here, and seeing the mark for 0.142, I can with the confidence say, this thing is exactly 29.2 centimeters. But as a scientist, we are allowed to measure and take a guess on that last number in the measurement. So here we see it's barely past it, and so my eye would call that barely past it would be um, one-tenth of that distance, and so I would write the one there. So in terms of significant figures, we're going to say this has one, two, three, four digits, four numbers that are significant. And this matters because it tells other scientists around the world how precise you were in your measurement. Because if somebody took the same reading and got 29, and you took the same reading and got 29.2, and then another person took the same reading and got 29.21, the question is, who was right? Well, everybody's right. It's just the last guy was being more precise than the other people. So how do we determine significant figures within a number that already exists? So let's say you already took your measurement, you looked at the equipment, and you took your measurement, and you have this number based upon what was accurately read and what was estimated. So now you already are given a number. Which numbers are significant? Which ones were written down by somebody somewhere said that, hey, I was confident in these numbers, and then that last digit was the one that I rounded or I estimated. So the rules we follow is that if there is any number, if any digit has a measured non-zero number, it is significant. So in the case of this first number, 44.7, we would say this has three sig figs. The next rule we look at is that every zero that is sandwiched between one or two non-zero digits is significant. So right here we have three, one, two, three. This zero is with confidence has been measured. And so if I had a number 400.7, zero, zero it would have four sig figs because both zeros inside 400.7 would be significant because because they are sandwiched between two non-zero digits. Now the next rule you can apply, any zero in front of a non-digit zero is not significant. Here we see this zero and this zero. These are not considered significant because they were not actually measured. They are just there as placeholders, just showing you magnitude of this reading. So we have 0 0.078. This would have just two sig figs. This rule is a little tricky, but with a little practice, I believe you will get it. And then the last rule that we follow with sig figs is any zero at the end of a non-digit number is significant only if there's a decimal place. So for example, if I say 4,000, since there's no decimal place here, this number only has one measured value or even estimated value in this case. 
And so this would have one sig fig. Here, since I have a decimal, this has four sig figs. All these zeros are significant because there is a decimal point. So what that means is somebody somewhere read and measured this number exactly to this point, and then they were able to estimate this one and say, yeah, that is basically right on the money at 4,000. And then, of course, if I add more zeros after the decimal, those two are significant as well because these were actual red, and then the last one was an actual estimated number that with confidence a scientist or someone taking the reading could say, yes, that is true. The number is 4,000.00. So all we're doing here is we are just exercising precision with more sig figs. And again, each digit has a meaning. Some numbers were very accurately exactly known, and then that last digit that last digit was estimated. So here's some practice problems. Pause the video, go through and try to determine by writing out the number of significant figures each of these values have. Pause the video and then after you attempt to answer all of these, I will give you the answers. So on this first problem, we see there are three non-zero digits here. And so therefore, all of these numbers are significant, so we would answer and say 3SF. On this next one, we see that it begins with a non-zero digit and ends with a non-zero digit. So these two zeros are going to be significant, as well as our first rule, since this isn't a zero and this isn't a zero, those are significant. So we end up with four sig figs here. Four sig figs. This next one, we know for sure this is significant. This is, and this is. So we know for sure there are three sig figs. So now we got to determine these zeros. Are they significant or not? And the rule was, if they come before a number, a non-zero non number, and there's a decimal, then they are not significant. So we are showing that these are not significant. Therefore, here we would also have just three sig figs. Here, we would have two sig figs because these zeros are not significant because there is no decimal here. As to we're here, we would have four sig figs. One, two, three, four. Of course, all the numbers that are non-zero are automatically significant, but because there's a decimal here, we're showing that somebody took the time to measure out this unit or this placeholder and also was able to measure out and estimate this placeholder. Following the last one here, we have to determine about these zeros. And again, these are non-significant and everything else is. These are significant because they are non-zero digits. These zeros are significant because they come after a whole number and a decimal is present. So this final answer would be 5S. We'll cover this again in class. We'll do some practice problem on this. Uh, but really, you just need to continue to be really confident at knowing these rules and then applying them step by step as you go through. So the last thing we're going to look at is how do we allow significant figures to affect our answer when we start to do calculations? So there's two different sets of principles here. The first set is when you're dealing with adding and subtracting, you use this rule. When you're dealing with multiplying or dividing, you use this rule. So let's start first with adding and subtracting. This is the more complicated of the two processes, but once you get this uh, concept down, you will see it's pretty straightforward. So the idea here is that this number was measured and it is only precise to the 10th spot. This number was measured and it is only precise to the 100th spot. So we have two numbers that were measured and we're adding them together. The rule of thumb for both of these answers is your answer cannot be any more precise than your least precise measurement. Again, your answer can only be as precise as the least precise measurement. So since we are adding or subtracting in some cases here, my answer can only be precise as the, the last digit that was measured or estimated in my problem. So the way I do these problems is I add them or I stack them on top of each other. I line up the decimals. And then I answer the question. If you were to put this in your calculator, it would actually come out to 30, um, 32.1 plus 2.45. It would actually come out to 34.55. 
But how did I know I needed a 0 0.6 instead of a 0 0.55? Well, this digit right here was accurately measured, but this one does not. So since there is no significance here, my answer could only be significant to the 10th place, so I would have to go back and round. I will show you another problem like this, and I'll show you how I do it with my own hand. And again, maybe that will make sense. If not, again, we'll practice it in class, and you can ask questions. Now, when we go to multiplying and dividing, the same rule is true. My answer can only be as precise as the least precise measurement given to me in my equation. Simply stated, whichever value in your equation has the least significant figures, that's how many sig figs you're going to have in a multiplication or dividing problem. So how would I answer this? Again, there's three sig figs here. There are four sig figs here. So three is less than four, so my answer can only have three sig figs. So now, let me show you how this would look in my own handwriting. How would I, Mr. Lawrence, answer this problem, and how do I expect you to set this up uh, as you are learning this? So the first thing I do is I would see I am given this equation, or a problem. I'm subtracting these numbers. So I would write them out, and since this is a subtraction problem, I would line them up to where my decimals lined up. So I would write 3.8465 centimeters, and on top I had 10 points. So you can see how I lined up my decimals. My decimals would come here, and then I would go ahead and put it in my calculator. I would say 10.67 minus 3.8465 will give me the value of 6.8235, and then I have to keep the same units. I'm subtracting centimeters from centimeters. And so now the question is, how precise is my answer? Do I know for a confidence that the, the subtraction here, that this is a accepted value? Or do I have to cut it short because a number up here is less significant? And the answer is yes, you have to cut it short. So what I would do is I would look for this place here, I would put a line over top the last digit that shows significance. Since this is in the 100th spot, I can only be precise to my 100th spot. I cannot go all the way down here because these numbers were not precisely calculated because I did not have the full answer up here. So the answer for this problem would actually be 6.82 centimeters. Again, whichever value is the least precise, that determines the amount of sig figs that my answer could have. So again, here, we're going to go adjust to the 100th place, so my answer would be 6.82. The next problem you will see, let me do out by hand, is one that is shown with, math, with, with the uh, multiplication and division idea. So here, this problem is not as hard to, to figure out. When we do multiplying, all we really need to do is just go back and consider the number of sig figs in each problem or in each value that we started with. So in order to do this problem and to know my answer, I'm going to first go through and just put in my calculator 3.22, multiply it by 34.78, and I'm going to get this value of 111.9918. Units, meter times a meter is how you would write it. Or those of you who are um, understanding the math, it would actually be considered m squared. So now the question is, how precise is my answer based on my two starting points? Well, here I have one, two, three sig figs. Here I have one, two, three, four sig figs using the rules we learned on the previous slides. So my answer can only be as precise as the least precise number in my calculation. So since there's only three sig figs here, I'm only allowed to do the three sig figs, so I would count over, one, two, three. I will draw a line here, and now I know I can only be precise to the ones digit. Therefore, since I am precise here, I'm allowed to use this number to round. So my final answer would be 112 meters squared. Again, multiplication, you just look at the sig figs. On adding and subtracting, you actually have to look at the digits. The tens, the single, the tenth, the hundredth, the thousandths, and so on. So I hope this has been a good introduction to you for um, significant figures.
Again, long story short, significant figures are used to measure exactness. Plus, the extra digit is an estimated. So when we think about our measurements, all the numbers are exact, except the last digit that is given to you, you know what's estimated. And as a scientist, now you are able also to estimate that last digit when you take a reading. When adding and subtracting, we have to look at the spots to the right or left of the decimal place. So again, line up your decimal place. And when you multiply, all you simply do is look for significant figures. Who has the fewest significant figures? So again, adding and subtracting, is, you have to set it up with the decimal place and you have to understand that it's about which digit placeholder is least significant, but multiplying and dividing, it's all about just the least number of significant figures overall. I hope this has gotten you a good start. Have a great evening.